Oh my goodness, a tray full of goodies. So I wanted to show um, some more of the jewelry that I own. And um, I like these old cuff bracelets. You can see this one really needs a good polishing. I haven't worn it in a long while. Um, this one is a sterling. I have a couple of those in another box somewhere. This is an older one. I don't know if it's sterling, but isn't that a great little piece in the center? And it's got, it's got some serious age to this. I've inherited a lot. Um, a lot of the ivory pieces were from Japan. And then there's this little coral piece. I really particularly love the rose. And I have a bracelet somewhere, but it needs to have uh, needs to be restrung with stretch stuff. This is this is just a choker modern piece. Um, well, this one's upside down. This was a cameo ring that was my mother's. Come on, focus. And and there was some fuss apparently when um, all the lights kind of bleeding it out. It's a very pale pink background to this cameo, and it's set in, I forget what carat of gold, but some guy she was seeing had given it to her while she was still in high school. And, uh, but you know, back in the day, she got married a lot younger, um, and the family had a fit because, her parents had a fit because, oh God, he was an Italian family. So what? <laughs> but back then, you know, in the early 40s, this is carved down in to the stone, and oh, I dropped it, and I don't know what color. Okay, so it ref it shows red, like a really deep wine red on the um, on the piece that it's carved into. Again, it's you know it's another one of those old pieces that I inherited. That one looks old, but isn't. I like these. And somewhere there's a smaller one. It's a type of stone, and that's the way the crystal grows. And this one, you can see, had been repaired. They're called a fairy cross. And this one is a nice little mother of pearl one. All carefully cut out. The flat back. This was my great-grandmother's. Just a little heart thing. And it says it has Nana engraved on it, which was what they called her. Now, this looks like it should open, but it does not. This, Because look how thick that is. But I don't believe... At least I've never been able to get it to open. See, there is a tiny little hole there. So, But there's no hinge. There's no visible hinge for this to be a piece that, that actually opens. So, and then I have this lovely one. Now, I, I bought this one. That wonderful, like, caramel color background. And I love, I just love the uh, marcasite, which is, it's polished steel, usually set in sterling. And I believe this one is marked... On the back, yep, marked sterling. I have a couple others. I bought this one. This is a fairly modern one. This isn't, I don't think this one's particularly old and it needs a new back put on it. But this one I inherited. Really nice. I mean, all the silver needs a polishing. But I inherited that and the little marcasite cross. I also inherited, and these are things to watch out for, micro mosaics, okay? So, see if I can get this to focus in. Come on. Come on, help me out here. Okay, there, that's close. Now this is a more modern piece because you'll see that it's pretty uniform stone size all the way around. 
the flowers are not super detailed. And you can see it says Made in Italy on the back. And then there's this one, which is much older. If we can get it to focus in a little. And you can see all these little tiny pieces. I can't get too close, but every little one of these things is a little piece. Every little tiny dot you hear is a C is it here? Ha! Huh? That you see is a tiny, tiny little glass or a blue glass rod with a white center. And this is a much older piece. And look what they did to the back. Look at all that work on it just to have it say made in Italy. Isn't that awesome? But the really fantastic piece I have that I inherited is this one. This is the absolute fantastic micro mosaic art that you really want to find. Every bit, if I can get it to focus better. Oh, I wish it would focus close up. Ah, I got to go all the way down here. But every one of those petals, every feather on the bird is a tiny little piece. And it's just absolutely stunning. Made to look like an old horse collar. It's got all the little knobs all the way around. It's got the original, I think the original hinge. Maybe not. Maybe that's a replacement since it's a different color. Um, but that is... You know, just how fabulous the micro mosaic used to be. Absolute stunner of a piece. And going nowhere. None of this is for sale. This is all mine. This is my personal collection here. I have a jade cross. This is another little piece of ivory. You know, and it's got some age. And uh, I'll tuck you back there. I love bar pins. And these are two really nice examples. Sometimes they're called collar pins or scarf pins. Um, but these two are really nice examples. You can tell that hinge, they're older. Most likely uh, Victorian, no later than Edwardian. Which, you know, we to talk about Edwardian. Edwardian was such a very short period of time. Because, you know, I think... I think think King Edward after Victoria, um, I think only lived six years. It wasn't very long. I love this, this wonderful cat pin. I really, really love this. This was, you know, a lot of this was what I inherited when my great aunt passed away and I was told that I was to have all the jewelry boxes in the house. Well, turns out that, you know, I got hers and her mother's and the stuff left over my, my my grandfather. Yeah, I need to get in a little bit of an extender chain to put on this. That shimmer in the back is butterfly wings. And they would back paint the glass and then put this iridescent butterfly wing piece behind it. I have that one, which I inherited. Now this piece I bought, and I'm really sure, I mean, you look at the back, really sure this is far more modern um because they they did start making them for the tourist trade now i'm trying to figure out which is the one to tells you like like look how close these two are in what they portray it's almost except for the mountains it's almost identical but i think let's see the back on that one I think that one is the one I inherited first, and then this one, I think, came from a grandmother. Now, considering they're from the same branch of the family, you know, one from my grandmother and one from one of her sisters, they may have been gifted to them about the same time. I love this amber color glass, but look at the size of this thing. I can't read what's on there. Because, you know, I don't have my loop up here. I'm still stuck upstairs in bed. I'm sitting up for the first time in ages to do this. 
This is another one. Look at how this swirls around to give, and it's got the piece, so you could wear it as a necklace, but it is silver, but it's swirled around, so it has some dimension, but it's all little tiny wire work and a little pearl in the center. And this is an old one. This is Mother of Pearl, set in silver, and... says sterling on the back of the one leaf and then I have some special pieces that I really love um, well not this one this one's a new piece but there is see these are all garnets now when you find garnets now you don't find ruby red garnets ruby red garnets came out of Czechoslovakia prior to World War one and after that you don't start, you, you no longer see these ruby red ones. The ones you're seeing now are a wine color. So this little feather is, is another sterling piece. Now there were rings made from a large brooch that was broken up and made into rings for each daughter by my great-grandfather. This ring was the one designed by him and made by him for my grandmother. Now somewhere, and it's not in here, so it must be in the other jewelry box, um, I have the other one that was designed and made for Annie Floss, and it's missing a stone. It's missing a stone that looks just like that pointy one there, and is the same color as all these, and a friend saw this at a flea market and bought it and then just sent it to me even though it's missing the big stone um, but look at the size of this thing I mean it goes across three of my fingers the brooch that these rings came from was um, not quite twice the size because that one was a big big round one but it was done in the same style you see how this is layered up with a big stone in the center. That's what, we've seen it in photographs, old family photos, but that's what had been broken apart. It probably had some stones lost, and uh, so they decided to break it apart for each of their daughters. Um, this is just a, oh, I need to get it fixed. It's not too old, but it's a lady's little pocket watch. Um, I used to carry it in my pocket, but it finally stopped running. None of these watches run. I need to get them all fixed. Look how old this one is. This one was my grandmother's. I still have the the band she last band she had on it. It's an early Bulova. I love the blue hands that are under there, but it's got that stone that um, big dome to help make the numbers look bigger, to magnify them a bit. Absolutely love that. And this one is my, I absolutely adore this. So according to family lore, this watch was made by my great-grandfather for my great-grandmother as the wedding present. There's no maker's mark on that face. It's a stunner. I wore this for a long time because it had still run. At some point, the band had been replaced because there's no way this band is as old as that face. <laughs> um, but it's, it's nice that they tried to make it, you know, match in a little bit. But um, I, I have to find a place that does not send them out. Some places to repair watches will mail them out to another place to get fixed. I don't know. Mine's not disappearing in the mail anywhere. It's going to be done right there and I will stand there and wait for it. This was another beautiful little piece and I had it professionally cleaned. Look at the luster on that, on that pearl. Isn't that gorgeous? Absolutely gorgeous. But my... Mm, um, I have had that since I was 18 and uh, had gotten it cleaned at one point. Now I've gotten too heavy. I need to have 
a, um, I need to have a longer chain put on it. Now I've got some cool stuff that was from World War II and others. Now this is a locket that had been given to my grandmother. Doesn't have any pictures in it. And she never apparently took it out of the box and wore it. But my dad was in the Navy during World War II. He was on destroyer escorts, or they call them DEs. And he never saw any real action. They went back and forth over the uh, protecting the Jersey shoreline between Boston and New Orleans. That's where their two ports were. So basically they'd go party at each end of that trip and we're supposed to be watching for submarines um, up and down the East Coast. <laughs> His only, his only action he saw was when he first was on the first ship and they set the guns off for training. He had had night watch and his bunk was the one right underneath the giant bolts that hold the big gun on top of the ship. And boy, the first time that went off, he sat up so fast, he slammed his head into that bolt and split his head open and knocked himself out cold. They don't, they don't give a Purple Heart for self-inflicted injury. <laughs> This is all British coins from the 1940s. I think that one's a sixpence. I'm trying to see if you can see a year. Where is the year on the back? 1944. This was put together by my great uncle, who was only, I mean, he was only, I think, 10 years older than my mother. Um, so... He was stationed in England for a while during the war because he was a diver. And he ended up being in charge of a crew, actually in charge of a couple of crews, that would go to underneath the water and go check out the ships as they came back across the English Channel because sometimes there would be magnetic mines stuck to the sides of the ships and it was up to them to get them off the ship. And he almost died doing that because um, at some point they found, had a magnetic switch inside. So when the guy got this flat type of mine off the side of the ship, he tucked it under his arm. But that motion of moving it set it off and um, it killed two men. And my uncle, these are back when the diving helmets were those giant brass things with the glass on the sides and the glass on the face mask. And the glass on the side blew in ruptured his, the concussion blast ruptured his eardrum, knocked him unconscious, and he ended up, another diver got him, got him up top, and they both had to stay in a de decompression unit for, I think, over a week. So he always had trouble hearing uh, because of that. Now these were given out, and I never really quite knew why, because I had gotten this in the jewelry that I had inherited from Annie Floss. But then, when my dad's mother passed away, I got this. This one's never been taken out. And it says, this certificate that you, and they should have your name, will be authorized to wear the Army-Navy Production Award Emblem in recognition of meritorious work performed as an employer of the whatever company, you fill it in there, part of the battle of production is being won through your efforts, and this E emblem is visible proof of the Army and Navy's recognition of your accomplishment. Wear it with pride. And it's signed by the Secretary of War, Under Secretary of War, the Under Secretary of the Navy, and then on the front has Franklin Roosevelt and his message but it is the exact same little pin. Now, there were a lot of people, and I don't know what that says on the back, but there were a lot of people that got these pins because if you were still in production, um, then that was a good thing. And I know at the time, my one grandmother worked for Baldwin Locomotives in the offices, and that was in Eddystone, PA at the time. Now, I have not figured out where this is from. 
I don't know. It's an eagle. It's an O. You know, it's big circle. It's it, it would go through a buttonhole. So I'm assuming it's for on a collar. It's kind of small to be a cufflink. Really, I mean, it's way too small to be a cufflink. But if anybody can recognize this, by all means, let me know. <laughs> now, this was my father's U.S. Navy pin. Um, I have tried to go into the Navy out of high school, but that's when they found a problem with my heart. So they probably saved my life. <laughs> but I, I have that with pride. And then this, this is from his father, I think. We're not 100% sure because I can't remember which family I got it from. I'm not sure. it. I mean, I don't know if this would have been from Pop-Pop, which was my dad's father. He served in World War I. He never had to go over to, to Europe. When they found out he knew how to butcher steer, he was sent up to Connecticut to can meat uh, for the troops that were going to fight. So I don't know if that's from his World War I uniform or if this is from my great, is it two greats or three greats? I'm not sure. I always forget how many, but Amos Trout fought with the Pennsylvania 5th Regiment. I think, I forget which company, I think Company E. But at one point, uh, we ha used to have, my brother has them in California somewhere, we had a document that was signed by Ulysses S. Grant for the quartermaster, Amos Trout, for requisitions. Because the regiment that he had been in took such heavy losses that they kind of got scattered, and he was sent down to, um, he was sent down south and attached to a unit that was directly under um, the maintaining the camp for Ulysses S. Grant. So uh, that could possibly be from him. But that's all there is. This is, you know, just a little another box of treasures. None of these are for sale. <laughs> but I just thought I'd share some eye candy with you while I'm still stuck here. Um, I'm. This is the longest amount of time I have sat up. And my leg is starting to cramp a little. I was given a shot today to hopefully calm things down. And I will have to call on Monday and set up physical therapy. Because I have two discs that have pinched down on one side. And the hip is still a little bit out of, out of alignment. So... Um, they're hoping physical therapy will help get that moved. So I hope you enjoyed the fun view of all the eye candy here. And uh, I'll see you the next time I can figure out what I can do. If I can sit up longer to do something else. I'm basically trying to sit up to try to get ready for a live sale. But I can't last very long. This, this video is 23 minutes long and my... My leg is about, and hip is about at its limit because it's starting to tighten up and spasms won't be far behind. So you guys have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy the live sales. There's many of them, you know, and, and uh, may you have a very pleasant night and a wonderful weekend. And if you like what you see, by all means, subscribe to the channel, hit that little bell icon and hit all notifications. Because there's no way I can keep a regular schedule for video uploads or anything right now, considering that I have been in bed rest the last two weeks and my mobility is so limited with this pinched nerve. So, by all means, subscribe, hit that thumbs up button, leave a comment, and hit, uh, hit the bell and set it to all notifications. That way you'll never miss when something of mine pops up. Have a great weekend!